Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast with me, Vasavi. I'm so happy to be here with Nita. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So I was recently on your podcast, The Brave Table. I loved it so much. I want the audience to really um, understand who you are as a person. No, I. you made me cry on your podcast. It was just like- I know I did. I mean, I did. You, you have such- Nobody a- can get you to cry. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm a cold hearted bitch. It takes a lot for someone to make me cry. I'm, I'm ice cold. I'm pretty much frozen. I'm starting to melt a little bit. It's starting to happen, but melting. you, I'm melting. You have the ability to really draw out this, um, like the, the, the courageous, brave, vulnerable, resilient parts of so many people. Um, you've dedicated so much of your life, helping people really develop that grit within that resilience, which is just a muscle to be built, right? Resilience is a muscle that can be built. And you are someone that is not a stranger to grit and, um, resilience. So what I'd love for my audience to hear from you is really what are some of the key things in your life that, that have shaped you to become this person who is the embodiment of grit and resilience. And now you help other people develop that within themselves. Like what, what's gone on in your life that you, that you can stand so proudly and and be this person who's like known Uh for grit and resilience and bravery. Yeah, that's a, that's a fully loaded question. I feel yes, like it's, that really- is what I do. Loaded <laughs> questions where we're at loaded baked potatoes, loaded- fully loaded to yeah. say it out loud. Well, yeah. first of all, I, I kind of just want to say, I love you. And it's been so great to just like drop in after all these years. And honestly, yeah, this whole, I feel like it's been a life circle because everything that I've gone through from like losing my parents at a young age, becoming a caretaker at 10 years old, being the oldest, you know, as a brown Filipino Indian girl, a very traditional Asian family, Asian Indian upbringing. And, you know, we're, we're taught educational success, drive, pride, legacy, you know, from when we're really young, but then I didn't realize that my mom was going to get sick super early and that shattered, you know, the dreams that like brown American dream, right? The, those, those dreams that we had and I, we just had to go in a different direction. So it was a lot of survival mode growing up um, where I spent a lot of, you know, evenings, summers in hospitals because my mom had a six-year battle like on and off with breast cancer and then it, it it eventually ended up in her lungs and it came back remission for two years but then when I was in high school it came back when I was 14 and then she was in the ICU for most of the end of her life and that was so traumatic obviously uh and and yeah we we lost her when I was 16 so I had to take the reins, not only that, then a year later, we had another tragedy uh, and we lost my brother to an asthma attack. I was literally, it was my senior year, it was homecoming. Uh, We went to similar high schools, which were across the street from each other. And he had asthma, but it wasn't terrible. You know, I think spiritually, energetically, he was just so close to my mom. Um, to the floor. And it was, it was very traumatic. They tried to revive him. They, they couldn't. And so that really was a shock to our entire family. It was one of those deaths where it was completely not expected. And that too, on my youngest brother's birthday. And wow. the trauma does not end there <laughs> because then two years later, we would get hit with another, uh, I mean, and I talk about this in keynotes and things like that, but another life altering just, you know, the, the pit in your stomach kind of feeling where you're like, shit, something bad's going to happen because you've already been through not once, but twice. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and now this would be the third time. And my father, uh, was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And so, uh, and so that really took him over, uh, and he perished 10 months later. And that was all before I was 19. So it was a lot of grit, a lot of resilience, a lot of really, it was all survival. I mean, I look back at it now and I look back at the family that I've been able to create because now I have two babies. I have the love of my life. Uh, I also had to go through a a hardcore marriage um, and a tumultuous divorce in between that time. But now I see full circle and now I finally 
get to the, it was literally a few months ago when my daughter was born. So I have a son and a daughter. And I was like, wow, this is what joy feels like. Oh, that I'm not constantly having a pit in my stomach or worrying that is somebody going to die? Obviously those are big triggers for me, by the way, Mm -hmm. but it's not like, I'm experiencing way more joy than I ever have in my entire life because of battling just the dark clouds of what am I here for? What's my purpose? Because you have most of your family dying in front of your eyes and you think everybody is going to leave you. And there's this like visceral fear and trigger of abandonment. And that's been my internal work, but it's obviously got me to then see the resilience in other people and the grit in so many other people as we walk this journey. There's a lot. That's, that's so, first of all, thank you for, so much for saying that. And because this is the Say It Out Loud podcast, and I think my guests know when they get on here, like I'm going to ask them the questions, I'm going to probe. And I'm asking you this, because I think I just got off my own interview. Like I was actually being interviewed on somebody else's podcast and I shared not obviously the same exact story, but I shared my own uh, story about divorce, codependency, cocaine, of course, like all the things that people interview me about, the things that have helped me develop my grit and resilience. So I got to ask you this next question. Uh, After sharing, which is just like gut punch after gut punch, not going to lie. I have a visceral reaction because I don't think I know the details of your family story. I did not realize it was like one after the other. I had a different idea of what that story was. So first of all, thank you. I've been friends with you for a while now and I did not know that. So thank you for sharing that with me and so bravely with my audience. But just how does it feel saying all of that out loud? Like, I know you say this all the time on every interview, but like, again, you know, it's like we, do you feel re-traumatized having to share this out loud again? I'm just curious. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, I do feel it in my nervous system and I feel like, Ooh, that was a lot. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, just to relive that. Yes. You're on the other side, but you always miss your parents. You always miss your family members. You know, I look at my kids and I'm like, Oh, wow. But talking about their grandparents or talking about their grandfather and how amazing of a traveler he was, like, we'll remember those memories, but the visceral gut punch of like, whoa, those were some traumatic days. And whoa, I'm so glad to be on the other side of that because I feel like contrast lives in the depths of the highs and the lows. Mm -hmm. And I can only- Bipolarity. The it's bipolarity. The bipolarity that yes, and and you obviously know this so much, but if we didn't have that contrast, I you know we wouldn't really be living life. Not that I'm trying to say everybody should totally yeah. experience what I went through because that's uh you know that was definitely a soul contract that I signed up for to experience all the all the beauty and the duality of life at its fullest. Mm-hmm. And I think also so that I could, you know, help others navigate some of the hardships and adversities of life. I mean, at least that's, or that's the piece that I have in my heart about it. Uh, but yeah, does it still ache and hurt when I talk about it and say it out loud? I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, that was, that was a lot. Like that all happened within four years. I say, you know, within 10 years, because it was like something was constantly happening. Mm-hmm. Yet there were joy in those moments. There was joy when my mom was dying. There was joy even in the despair when we had a sudden death with my brother. And for those of you who have gone through a sudden death where somebody is taken away within a snap of their fingers and you're like, what just happened? My best friend, my teacher, my mentor, somebody I look up to, my grandparent, et cetera, et cetera. It's it's a visceral shock to the system. And of course you can create those patterns that, okay, I don't know what's safe. I don't know who's safe. I don't know what I can trust. And so that's kind of, you know, given me the, the edge of, of doing what I do now. No, you, it's definitely your edge. I mean, I, it it sounds so sick to say this, but like the shit that you've gone through is your edge, you know, when, and I want to share that because you're one of the co-founders of the Dharma coaching Institute. Uh, When I was raised, I remember you know, my father would always do everything with so much pride. You know, he loved being a father. He loved being a husband. He's definitely a hashtag girl dad. My father, he said, my dad, always said, yeah, he said, I was meant to be a father to girls. He goes, because he didn't really have a father. He didn't have a great, you know, role model. So my father said, I don't think I'd be good with the son, but he was great with us. My dad always used to say, and I always used to ask him, how are you able to do things with so much joy? I mean, he would check 
my mother's gas tank. And if it was a quarter empty, a quarter of the way full, he'd go fill it up. He'd just go do that. So my mother didn't have to do it. He did that with me when I had my first car. And he always used to say, it's my dharma. It's my mm. duty. And my, the way my, so the way I learned what dharma was growing up was our duty. And I never liked that word, Nita, because I felt like, don't tell me what to do. What's my duty? Of course, the but, rebellion is boss. Of, co- comes out. of course, it's like, don't tell me what my, what my duty is. But I have obviously, as I'm getting older, I'm going to be 40 and, you know, my dad's older and I kind of just see how they raised me. And now I hear you sharing your story. It's like, wow, you are the living embodiment of dharma because- you know, mm-hmm. you could have easily been victimized, which I'm sure you had your moment of, of, of being, of because you, in, in a way you were a victim as a child, you're, you're a victim to that, to that loss, right? You didn't know any better. It just happened. You were, you know, you, you were victimized at, at such a young age, having to deal with this loss, but look at how you've taken that you've taken mm-hmm. what's happened and it's taken years. And it's like, you've internalized it and now externalized it in a way to help other people not only go through their own shit, but then be able to turn it, capitalize on that and monetize that. And that's something that I think we need to be able to say it out loud. It is okay to capitalize on the stuff that you've gone through so Mm -hmm. as to help another person and monetize it. There is nothing wrong with that. It is such a beautiful blend of your darkness, your lightness, your bright, your, your wisdom, and you can help someone and you can sustain a lifestyle doing that. Fuck. That is jackpot there. Sign me up. Well, no, I think also for people that look like us, right? Yeah, let's talk about it. When I was going through, you know, these dark days of trauma, no one knew what to say to me. Heck, my my dad didn't even know what to say to people when he was like, oh, I'm so sorry your wife died, or I'm so sorry your, your son passed away. My dad just went into deep depression. And literally, I had to then perform and shine and be not only the gatherer and the, you know, my, my dad and I were very similar. He has so much charisma, was like life of every party, loved bringing people together. But when his light died in the form of his wife and his oldest son, it took him out where then I needed to then overcompensate and do all of these things as like a 16, 17, 18 year old. And if there was something that taught our Brown community, how to handle stress, how to handle adversity, how to handle when things weren't going right, sign me up. I would have been all for it. Like my dad was all about, you know, talk therapy, spirituality. He meditated on the weekend and literally had like devout prayers with his mala beads sitting for six hours, sometimes on a Sunday meditating. That was his dharma. And we grew up like, you know, Punjabi, but Hindu Punjabi, but we also did, you know, the, the Sikh temple, uh, the Gurdwara, we did everything. And my mom was Catholic. So it was like, we did the, the whole, the full trio just to, to have that. But the thing was in our culture, we don't talk about the sad stuff. It's like bury it and study more and just focus on your studies. I, I was still told that, you know, in my senior year to still apply for early admission, even after my brother passed, like during that season in October. I'm not surprised. And, I'm not surprised yeah, that because surprise that's me. all they knew. That's all they knew. It was like, all right, at least you'll get good grades, but I can't really focus on it. What, I'm what dying on the inside. What do you, you know, but so you went ahead yeah, and like, became a focus chemistry. Okay. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And then like, look at, look, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. So you, so you went to no, school. And yeah. So, well, and so, so I think here why this conversation is so important and why you know, we, our co-founders and I, my husband, Ajit, and our co-founder, Sahar, and I, we all merge at this idea of Dharma and Dharma Coaching Institute, because for people that look like us, for people who have gone through things and they can't make meaning of it, or they're losing meaning because they're forced into a a career, a profession, a marriage, a life that they don't like, but they don't know how to find themselves. That's what this is all about. I mean, it's based on our lineage and our ancestry. Yes, of, please say that. Yes. Generations and generations of, 
you know, other cultures appropriating what has come to our lineage so naturally in the form of dharma, in the form of service, in the form of truth, in the form of your purpose, but it's to really further your own growth first before you're actually doing things for other people. I can say this right now with, with clarity, confidence, because yeah, of all of the things that I'd had to go through, but I had no idea where to start to re like to revitalize my life, to take back what was lost from me in a way where, yes, I didn't feel like I was a victim Mm -hmm. and I could take ownership in, okay, some of the storylines and the narratives that were happening in my life and say, you know what? Okay. I'm going to make meaning of this in a way that makes sense for me so that other people of color who are going through the adversities of life, who are going through really shitty human moments that of course are inevitably going to happen, but give them the tools not to just survive, but thrive. And for us, it's, it's the birth of Dharma Coaching Institute, where if you've never been exposed to different modalities of healing, and you guys, this is in our back pocket, this is in our backyard. Now you can, and and honestly, we take it a step further. It's a six month training and it's literally the best personal growth you'll ever have because we do blend all of the things that you hated growing up hearing. Cause I, we would make fun of my dad and we would take the mala beads and put it over our head. Like we didn't really appreciate what now, of course, our, our American culture appreciates with the yoga and the wellness movement, right? We can say that out loud. Mm -hmm but do it in a way where it's actually, it could be a savior for your families, a a healing tool for your relationships, not to mention a healing tool for you, giving you all the, the, the capacity to have deep and, and conversations that you're probably so ashamed of, or didn't know how to start having because you have more clarity, you have more confidence and you now have the spiritual backing that maybe growing up, you just put aside because you were so focused on what other people thought was great for your life. So I'm, I'm, I'm just so proud of what we've been able to build. We've certified now close to 800 students. Wow. And How many of yeah. them are Brown, by the way, how many of them are yeah, we right. actually have, we actually have a good mix. We, our students come from 30 countries across the world. Wow. And right now are in, and, and they're not just from the brownies from the States. They're from all over, like, you know, Dubai, the Middle East, um, everywhere, India, I, everywhere, everywhere. So we're very, we're very proud of our cohorts. And we actually have cohort three that's actually starting in the first week of April Mm -hmm. that's when we close our doors so we're our enrollment actually opens up this weekend Mm -hmm. if you were ever curious about starting a new chapter of your life or if you were like you know what I've been focusing on everybody around me except for myself and I am dying to either have more spiritually inclined friends or asking the questions I should have asked when I was younger or maybe you're like you know what? I'm curious at how I can actually make this into a career because we have two tracks. One for somebody who is just so open and curious to build their own personal growth and really dive into Dharma teachings. I mean, Ayurveda is the oldest known science and we know this obviously, but really we've been able to put it in a way where we're understanding your doshas, we're understanding the chakra systems, we're understanding how to really make sense of a lot of the things that have happened to us and also clear our our lives in the form of the foods that we eat, how we're functioning, what types of things are we doing in our day that actually matches our dharma and matches our dosha and how to have better conversations so that we can connect better with our parents, our loved ones, even in our career, how to actually champion yourself. And so we blend a lot of the Eastern philosophies in a way where you can become a better communicator, not to mention if you wanted to actually create a career path around this in Dharma Coaching Institute. There's a, okay. So what I love about this is 
you know, when I first became, when I, when I had graduated from my master's in social work at Columbia, and then I found out about coaching. This was in 2010. I joined this year long coaches training program. Everyone was white. My leaders were white. And I just yeah. remember going in there and being like, you know, there's like, I, you know, I, I was raised in a Hindu Brahmin household. We were like the equivalent of Orthodox Jews, right? A lot of the stuff that I didn't value back then, like prayer, meditation, but you know, pranayama, you know, breath work, yoga. I was like, oh, okay. And then when I, as I became, you know, as I started my coaching career, this was 10 years ago, I started seeing a lot of white people using mm -hmm. a lot of the Indian tools that I had once like poo pooed, right? Because you know, when it's shoved down your throat, you just oh, don't you appreciate it. You, you don't, I mean, when I was younger and I had a little bit of acne, my mom would mix yogurt and turmeric. Not to you got that too. <laughs> not turmeric, it's turmeric. My mom would make yogurt and turmeric and she put it. And back then I was like, this is gross. And now it's like turmeric face paste. And I'm like, wait, we've been doing this shit since we were kids. What, what I love about Dharma Coaching Institute, I wish I had had something like that because I would, I want my leaders to look like me. That matters to me because I'm not just Sally from Iowa right? I'm Vasavi Kumar, first generation from Long Island. I, you know, our house always smells like, you know, you get it, curry and incense. Curry. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm, too, I'm too white for the brown kids. I'm too Indian for my family. And I have, I have this unconventional dream to go help people. I want to talk. I want to, and my parents are like, just go to school and study, go get your master's, go get an Ivy league, go do that. So I did all that. But you, you know, when, when your soul wants something bad enough, when it's your Dharma to, to live this path, nothing and no one can rip you from that. Right. So I love with DCI Dharma coaching Institute, you guys have a plan. You're like, listen, stick with us for six months, even if you never walk away with the coaching business. And that's fine. You still have the tools to help yourself and to spread that to your family, to your friends. And hey, if you want down the road, you also get the tools to monetize who you are and your wisdom package that position that sell that and, 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 and make money from it. Right. So it's, it's breaking through so many of the beliefs that we've been taught, like you need the job, you need the nine to five. And what you're saying is no, we come from a rich culture, this beautiful Eastern culture that so many white people are making so much money off of, right? I want more Indian women life coaches. I want more Indian men life coaches. We have this shit in our DNA. We are raised with it. We have a mentality that we are raised with. No matter how long you lived in this country, like people say to me, are you American? I say, I'm Indian. I think like an Indian, I have that instilled. And because of that, I do business differently. I do business differently because I was raised, I think like an Indian, I have Hindu values instilled in me. Now, I'm not saying DCI is just for brown folks and whatever, but for my brown women out there, brown men out there who are like, I want to help other people. I don't want to have this nine to five. I would say, look no further than DCI because you have Ajit who, you know how much I love Ajit. <laughs> we have you, right? Who, who you have a beautiful blend too. You've been through so much in your life, Ajit as well. And then you have Sahara, who's great at building the platform, building the community. You have business mindset. You have that Eastern mentality, the Western, and both, all three of you are so phenomenal when it comes to business building clearly. But then you also, God, the, the, I, I feel like the piece that is missing in the coaching industry, you have this richness of culture that you haven't had to appropriate because you were born into it. Well, it's so true. You know, like let's now we can, we, we really can own that space and have a different conversation because we also do teach about how to, I mean, cultural nuances within coaching yeah. because in other programs and platforms, and we've studied a bunch of these types of training schools because Ajit and I, we actually do a lot of certification and trainings for a variety of places and organizations. And mm -hmm. so this is the only one that I can say with full certainty that not only is this a dual certification. So for all of you overachievers out there, this is the only dual certification where you can actually get, if you wanted to, a spiritual life coaching yes. training diploma plus yes. Not only that, a sole purpose coach. And yes, you are certified as a certified Dharma coach. It is the only one in the world with that distinction. And not only that, if you are into getting the accolades, we have partnered up with the International Coaching Federation, which is kind of like the creme de la creme. It's kind of like the Harvard. They're the governing body of the coaching industry. They're the, they're the governing. They're, um, yeah. 
Yeah. And so you actually get continuing credit hours when you take the six month training at DCI Dharma Coaching Institute. And what I love about our program so much is, is yes, to your point, there are three of us, we're Brown. We come from very different backgrounds in terms of our, you know, career landscape and also our personal experiences. And what I love about it so much is we've also put in not just cultural nuances, but also how to have better conversations, even if you're not coaching. And so many of our students and our graduates create coaching divisions within their companies. Mm -hmm. And because they're already certified in this, they're having better conversations. They're having, they're building better bridges within their companies, within their organizations. And they have cultural nuance training Mm -hmm. where you can have more empathy and more compassion for other cultures. And so this is great. Even for the brownies that are listening, you've got white friends that you're like, okay, you got to understand the depth and and the entire landscape of where we're coming from, have them take the DCI training, have them take Dharma Coaching Institute training, because it is truly one of a kind. And we've, we're constantly adding value. We've obviously you're, you are a a teacher within DCI as well. And we have a ton of different master coaches and trainers that we also bring into the foray because we want everyone to have a well-rounded education, not just within the coaching space, because between Ajit and I, we've written two books on the coaching space and we serve a ton of coaching training people. But not only that, coupling with the spirituality. And I think that if there's ever a right time, you know, they say that the last two years was the great reassessment. And thank God we're able to reassess the things that matter in our life coming from where we come from. Being brown, having, you know, such cultural rich heritage that we have, and now having the exposure that we could actually chain, be the way showers for our family members, be the way showers for the people that look up to us in our family, be the way shower that we can actually be fully rounded. You can have a thriving career, but you could also have the ability to pivot and shift and change even within yourself and not, you know, not do anything about it from a career standpoint, if you don't want to, but this just gives you a little bit more roundedness and and meet fellow people who perhaps maybe you've been wanting to have more of. Absolutely. You know what? I, I'm just, I'm, I'm realizing this as we're talking, do you know that like in all my years of ever talking about or interviewing anything, I have never actually promoted any coaching program, like anyone's like coaching's training program, because to be quite honest, I just thought everything was watered down. I, any, mm-hmm. you, so, so the number one question people ask me, how do I, I'm not, I have a client. I love her very much. She goes, boss, I want to do what you do. And she goes, do I need to go through a coach's training? And I say yes and no. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because I think this will help inform my audience. A lot of people who listen and they're like, boss, I I mean, people, I hear that. It's like, I want to do what you do. It it, it takes a little bit of putting aside the pride to actually say that. But the people who come to me and say, I want to coach, I want to do what you do. And that question of, do I need a certification? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So I have blended my life experience, my own Mm -hmm. stuff, my own traumas, my, you know, my master's in social work my life when all that. And I also have a coach's training uh, certificate that I got through ICF. It was through through this company in 2010. Do Mm -hmm. I think somebody needs a coach's training uh, certification? Yes and no. I, I think, I think coaches training programs that help you become a better human being will help you become a better coach, which is what I really hear from DCI. I heard you say that, like, it's really about developing you on the inside. So I'd love to hear from you. Like when people come to you, obviously you started DCI, you obviously think people need coaches training, but I'd, I'd love to hear from you because there are so many different coaches training programs out there. What did you see was missing? Like what's the number one, two, three things that you saw have been missing that are in DCI? that people can. So, yeah, no, I think this is a very valid question, of course. And honestly, having built many coach training and certification programs for a lot of other talents that we work with between Ajit and myself, what I knew for a fact and what I still say, even, you know, and this is, this is the say it out loud podcast. Mm -hmm. 
You hit it on the nail when you said, you know, do we actually need coach training programs? I think there's so many that are popping up in this day and age. And what I've seen and what between Ajit and I have seen, because we've cert, we've literally service catered and trained thousands at this point across the board, different industries, you know, different modalities, different themes. And what we have brought to the fold in Dharma Coaching Institute that was missing is literally the element of growing yourself because you cannot coach anybody if you are not understanding and you're going deep on the things that have happened to you in the past. Because in order to build rapport, which is the skill that you need, rapport and empathy, those are the main skills across the board, Don't no matter what, whatever coaching industry, uh, coaching certification that you take or training, you need to build those skills from the very ground up. What we do and what we saw that there was a gap in the entire industry was blending Eastern and Western modalities. Mm -hmm. And it's not just cookie cutter. It's not just black and white. It's not just here are the 10 things that you need that's on the ICF you know, certification website. Or like the, all those all those white bro marketing tips. <laughs> no, no white bro marketing tips, please. I, they, I, I, you know, we're, we're obviously way more in depth than that in our curriculum goes into, we go into human design. We go into, you know, the ancient philosophies of Ayurveda, what does it actually mean to have Dharma, to live in your Dharma, to speak your Dharma, to, to use Dharma in your life, use Dharma with your family members in conversation as a coaching tool. We have specific Dharma related coaching tools and frameworks that you could actually use that helps you ask deeper questions. It's not just on the surface and it's not just cookie cutter that you're just going to get all of these things and boom, you're great. It asks you, well, how are you processing your emotions? What are some of the things we have a Dharma discovery spiral that really helps you understand how to process the emotions that a lot of times in our Brown families, we've never been given space to actually express, mm -hmm. talk about, feel, let go, embody, and we come from a very embodied approach, meaning that a lot of it is in our somatics, which means that it's not just the mental aspect, it's not just the emotional aspect of feeling, it's also the body aspect of really understanding, well, where is the body trauma? What does that even mean? How can we integrate that with the intellect? How can we integrate that with the emotions that somebody is not sharing? And so we go into the depths of even the, the feminine and the masculine and what that actually means for society growing up now and how, you know, women and men have both of those and the embodiment between the two. Not only that, we also go into the dynamics of not just Western ways of coaching, but like I said, the nuances within cultural aspects. If you are coaching somebody from the Middle East, very different conversation about pursuing your Dharma and leaving your career, because of mm -hmm. course, family obligations are huge. We literally have an entire suite of courses that talk about just that, because that's big for the majority of the world who are trying to navigate generational trauma who are trying to navigate conversations with their family members and with with their parents that they love and respect we view it very differently than somebody who is born and brought up here with traditional white parents would actually go through with their families and so to really understand the cultural differences there's no other program that actually puts this much thought and uh, and specificity to I think the the problems that our generation and our culture just given being first generation second generation even my kids right in this program so there's, I, I, I thought, I'm so happy that you talk about the cultural nuances. It made me think about when I was 14 years old, I went to cognitive behavioral therapy. I started off in regular psychotherapy and then I also mm -hmm. tried different approaches. So I tried to, I had, I was once working with a therapist and it was all about cognitive behavioral therapy and she wanted to help me change my thoughts. Great. Love it. We started talking about God. I was 14. I started mm -hmm. talking about how I pray to Ganesha who's the remover of obstacles. I said, oh, I can say the prayer for you. And I started saying a Sanskrit prayer to Ganesha. 
she told me to stop. And she goes, where does this Ganesha live? I go, oh, well, you know, Ganesha is an idol. It represents the remover of obstacles. She goes, so you're, so she, she mocked me and she goes, so you're praying to a statue of an idol. And I remember getting back into my dad's car and I'm like, I need to stop praying to Ganesha. And my dad's like, why? I go, because it's just an idol. It makes no sense. That's what my therapist said. And my dad said, stop listening to these white broads who don't know anything. My father said that to me. He's like, what do you mean? He goes, what do you mean you stop? He goes, we're not praying to the actual physical idol. We use idols so that we can focus. That is why we have idols. We're not worshiping the stone. We're worshiping what it represents, right? Which is such utter devotion, which is what, what when you think about the East, the word that comes to mind is devotion, right? And what if we could instill devotion and have devotion towards our own Dharma and we were more devoted to really being kinder to ourselves, gentler and more compassionate. And because of that, we can then help other people, right? So the, the thank you for sharing that about having those cultural trainings. And the other thing, this is a, a phrase I say over and over, and y'all are doing such a good job of this. I say strategy without a sense of self is pointless. And what y'all are really providing is to help you with the sense of self, because, you know, people are hungry for just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. If you don't fucking know who you are, it doesn't matter what you're doing because you're just a chicken with its head cut off at that point, right? So I love that y'all, I'm like excited about promoting this because we need this. And I didn't have this growing up. Like I- Same. Growing up, I didn't have it growing up. We, we knew puja, we knew to go pray. We knew to do our mantras. We knew to chant and to, and to fast and not eat, which I'm like, no, I don't want to starve. You know, but no <laughs> one, but, but you know, th the part that, that you're doing so beautifully in DCI is to blend the Eastern and Western. There's so many beautiful Western modalities coupled with the Eastern modalities. How do we bring that all together to help you figure out who you are? Okay. Figure out who you are, know who you are. Then when without you're the accolades, without the, who are you without, you got to burn all that down, right? Who <laughs> are you without that? Right. How, who, how would you be speaking? How would you be showing up? And like, that's how you build a business that is, you know, rooted in your dharma is that you know who the fuck you are first. Just have and to that is, and that's huge because when you realize and recognize who you are at your core, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter if you know Sally is going to judge you. It doesn't matter if you don't get the the next promotion because you were so good with yourself. You've done that internal excavation you've done that deep discovery and I love that you shared the you know the the talk therapy with your your therapist and her just kind of saying well what is that and, and mocking you because these are the unsaid things that so many of us have in terms of touch points where we weren't feeling heard we weren't feeling acknowledged we weren't feeling safe to express the things that we do. So it's kind of like I, when you were sharing that, I was like, oh my gosh, I remember I, I, there was a scene in Never Have I Ever where she's praying to, I think it was like Lakshmi or something. And it was like, oh yeah, I recognize that because I totally know what that's like growing up. But for somebody else to kind of put a damper on it or to make fun of it or, or not even respect it or give it reverence, mm -hmm. this is what we're trying to change with the form of devotion, which mm -hmm. is totally Dharma in DCI and, it, and to do it from a place of love and service. The two, the two mm -hmm. values that Ajit and I, when we go into any project, we always bring the two words, it's, it's love and service. Are you doing it from a place of love and how are you adding your value within service? But it starts with a service and love to yourself mm -hmm. and to really understand what you stand for, what you don't stand for, what are you ashamed of? What do you still need to make peace with? What are you able to reconcile within yourself? And that is the beauty of, and, and forget DCI for a second, mm -hmm. any training, look to see what training elements would they have? So many people love love doing yoga teacher training back in the day. Why? Because maybe it was rigorous. Maybe it gave you a sense of discipline, but out of that, they became devote yogis. They were doing yoga every single day. Why? Because yoga became that like religion for them. For many people, it was, it was the way a community you're, you know, you're sharing shared principles. And not only that, you're feeling more in alignment with your body. So there's that spiritual element. You have that connection back to yourself and you're doing it from a place of like a walking, moving meditation every single day, three times a day. Not only that, you're also learning the behind the scenes of yoga culture and, you know, the whole theories behind it. Mm -hmm. We're actually doing exactly that 
plus more because yeah. you have the business training for two months. You have all of the, you know, the, the psycho and, uh, and coaching training methodologies mm -hmm. coupled with, of course, the Vedic teachings, which is literally which is so rich, Vedic. which is literally you, yeah. you understand yourself by reading the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita. I mean, it's beautiful that you've taken what people who want to live this soul purpose life, uh, you know, you've given them a, a structure. And so I want to say this on the podcast, because y'all know, I don't like, you know, other than me promoting my own services, I don't really promote <laughs> other people's services. It's just like work with Vasavi, but I want to, I know, you know, I, I want y'all to really hear this because this is truly the number one question that I am asked is how can I do what you do, Vasavi? Because people see me, I'm just, I'm just a regular chick, I'm just a regular chick. I, just, I started out 11 years ago thinking, hey, maybe my dumb ass can help somebody. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can. And then, and then I actually started believing in myself and I had a few hiccups, but here we are 11 years later, longevity, right? So every, for everyone who's ever asked me, how can I do what you do? I want to help other people. And I'm especially speaking to, you know, to those who are first generation, especially if, if you know, you resonate with Nita, what, what Nita has been saying, what I've been saying, and maybe you are looking for a career transition, or maybe you just want to delve deeper into yourself. Think of it as a, as, as a six month delving inward. And as someone who's been through recovery multiple times, you know, these things don't happen overnight. Six months is a great amount of time to dedicate on yourself. And that really sets the foundation for you moving forward and you're getting so much more. So I really want to use this episode as an opportunity. Make sure you go to the show notes, you go to the link, you, 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 you check out Dharma Coaching Institute, you reach out to Nita, you reach out to me if you have any questions. If you've been looking for a sign of man, I need to do something different. I'm dead on the inside. I would love to find something where I can bring my full self to the table, you know, and you know, it's time to really make, make that, you know, th that shift, right? Because you've, you've spent so much time inwards and you know, you want to now express that outwardly in the form of service and love to others and make money from it. Then check out Dharma Coaching Institute. Man, I, I, I should be an affiliate or something. Wait, I am. And so I just, I, I want to say this to everyone. I'm very transparent. I am an affiliate for this program. I do not do affiliate partnerships with people because a lot of times I'm just like, eh, that shit is watered down. It really is. I have no desire. I, I mean, maybe I'd have a lot more money if I said yes to more partnerships, but I'm like, nah, if I'm not feeling it, I can't speak about it. So we've talked about this for almost an hour, Nita, the Dharma Coaching Institute, and not just the Institute. It's not about the Institute. Like Nita said, it's really about developing that sense of self and combining both that Eastern and Western and why not do it in a safe container, right? With, with well, people who can guide you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I love your transparency and I love, and I think that's why your audience loves hearing from you because you're, you're like no BS. I and can't lie. I, 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 it, I literally have a visceral reaction. I stutter. You do. You do. And, no. And it's, and, it, and it's so fascinating to see. And I just want to like tie everything back from, you know, even all of the hardships and the adversities that I've gone through for anybody who is struggling right now internally and is maybe in the middle of a crossroads. Maybe you are navigating divorce. Maybe you're navigating loss. Maybe you're navigating a health challenge of a loved one. And you're kind of like in this period of life where you're kind of reevaluating things. Honestly, this is what I wished I had during my divorce, during going through, you know, uh, domestic violence with my first husband. Was it pretty? Was it, you know, it literally had me down to my knees moment of like, okay, what am I going to do? How, how what and how? Like I had everything, you know, luxurious on the, like external lifestyle, thought I made it, was a cosmetic dentist, did all of the things before I was 30, but yet I was at a place where I was in such a low moment. And literally what we recreated now in DCI is everything that I had to do by myself, finding all of the things, going through the, the, the depths of different trainings, organizations, personal growth, coaching, et cetera, et cetera. And now this is in, you know, in a beautiful six month training that yes, can totally change your life can totally elevate your life and really perhaps give you more perspective on the things that you're doing that don't really align or make you come alive anymore. And that's why I'm just so honored to uh, partner up with you, Voss, in, in all of the ways, because you've, you've been such an, an incredible trainer for DCI. But I, I hope that for whoever is listening, they can either share this with their friends and family, because there's not very many programs where people actually look like us, embody it. And now we have that place for you. So come check it out. Uh, check out what we're all about at Dharma Coaching Institute. 
Anita, I uh, will text you after this uh, just to say how much I love you. I want to say thank you so much. I know you're, you are busy. You are running lots of things, life, kids, husband, home, businesses, all that. So I want to say thank you so much for coming on to today uh, onto the Say It Out Loud podcast. I, I miss you. I'm, I'm, I, I haven't talked to you in a week. So here we are. This is our one hour conversation. Now, now I can't say I'm mad at you anymore for not texting me back. We just had an hour long conversation. So uh, everyone, I'm going to put all the, all the links in the, in the description. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm, I'm, this is like a, like a shameless plug, okay? If you are thinking about a career transition, if you want it, if you've seen yourself in me, you're like, look at this brown girl coming from a Hindu Brahmin family, openly sharing about bipolar disorder, cocaine addiction. Man, she's still making money. How is she doing this? How is she sharing her shit with everyone and making money? Then I, 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 there's a container which you can learn how to bring those pieces of you and be so self-expressed and be of service to others. So please reach out to me, reach out to Nita. Nita, where can people people find you if they have questions yes. about BCI. Yeah. yeah. If you have questions, just hit me up on Instagram at Nita Bushin. And that's the best place. We also have at Dharma Coaching Institute and you can filter all your questions there at Dharma Coaching Institute on Instagram as well. Okay. We need more Brown life coaches. I'm, I'm in it. 2022 more, more Brown life coaches. I want them to learn from you. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. yes. I, I love you so much. Thank you for being here today. Such an honor.